This year, if all goes well, the first vertical launch from UK soil will be taking place from a very remote area of the United Kingdom, the Shetland Islands, and that is far, far north of Scotland, and the spaceport is called Saxavord. And if that sounds a little Viking to you, well, it's because these islands and their inhabitants are as much Norwegian as they are Scottish. It's a very unique group of people, a very unique culture, and a very uniquely uh, Shetland, shall I say, spaceport. But here's the most important thing about this first vertical launch. It will be carried out not by a British space company, but by an American one. The company is Lockheed Martin, and the cargo will be a few small sats carried by a space tug. It will actually be sort of an innovative launch with innovative technology. I like the idea behind it, but again, it's an American company that received more funding from the UK government than any UK spaceflight company received, and that I find to be very strange. Why why did Lockheed Martin, with their tremendous amount of resources, receive more funding than the native Skyrora, for example, who also are going to be launching from this very same spaceport? They're going to be launching a rocket called the Skylark XL. It's going to be launching small sats in a similar way to the Lockheed Martin rocket, but one of the differences is, is it's going to have a reusable space tug that's capable of carrying out multiple secondary missions in orbit, including the removal of space debris. I actually prefer this rocket to the Lockheed Martin model, but they did not receive as much funding. As a matter of fact, all of Skyrora's accomplishments up to this point has been carried out with less than a hundred million pounds worth of funding. Less than a hundred million. If they receive the kind of funding that Blue Origin receives in just one year, they would have easily reached orbit by now several times. And this is according to an interview that I carried out with Skyrora some time ago. This is a company that is doing a lot of innovative work, and they're doing it on UK soil. And by the way, it's not just the British who are involved with this company, it's also the Ukrainians who, in spite of the war, at at least according to unconfirmed sources that I have, are still conducting their work in Ukraine in spite of everything that's going on, and they intend to carry out their first launch sometime in 2023. What an accomplishment this would be, not only for the UK, but also for Ukraine, if this company could get a rocket into orbit in spite of everything that's taken place. They deserve considerable funding from the UK government, and it's not like they don't have it. But what makes me the angriest is the fact that there is a 100% sovereign UK company called Black Arrow, which is named after a rocket of the same name that went up in the 1960s, launched by the British government from Australian soil. But this one is created entirely in the UK using UK technology and UK workers. And this is going to be launched on the first sea platform launch of any kind since Boeing gave up on the concept years ago. And this company, unlike Lockheed Martin, unlike Skyrora, is ultimately going to be able to launch several metric tons into orbit. And the reason they can do this is because they're launching from sea platforms in international waters, whereas most launch providers in Europe are restricted to 500 kilograms worth of weight. That's why you keep hearing that figure over and over again when we're talking about UK launch providers and how much payload they're launching into orbit. So we have a company based out of Wales, by the way, that is completely UK in origin and capable of carrying some very respectable payloads into orbit, who is receiving virtually no support presently from the UK government. Now, that could change at any time. There were 
working very hard to receive that sort of funding, and the UK, at least ostensibly, is looking to capture 10% of the space launch market. But if they really want to achieve that, they should be supporting their local launch providers rather than bringing in American launch providers with incentives. But that's just my opinion. I'm not encouraging my British viewers to call up their MPs and complain about all of this, but it is something that makes me very angry. So until British launch suppliers start receiving some serious love from their own government, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.